I'm happy to welcome all speakers and listeners connected to the second day of the International Symposium entitled The Show Goes On, Media Art Festivals During COVID Times. My name is Monika Suchova. I'm a researcher with a focus on the intersection of software art and its exhibition practices, most experience in organizing and moderating conferences and symposiums. And my interest is also very much directed towards curating exhibitions focused on new media art. Now, this symposium is part of a symposium series entitled uh, Curating Online that consists of three parts that are scheduled throughout the year 2021. Uh, during the first run in April, uh, we tried to address the transformations that curators and art galleries uh, had to experience since early last year due to the COVID-19 global pandemics. Uh, we were asking questions such as, to what extent is a virtual exhibition format different from a, tradition, a traditional gallery exhibition? Or how are the established curatorial practices and methods applied in the virtual space? Are they at all? Uh, what are the uh, specifics of communication towards visitors, viewers, of an exhibition happening in a virtual space. The April Symposium aimed to confront and evaluate uh, the various art and culture mediation strategies that cultural institutions have used, rejected or uttered in this special regime as possible scenarios for the new age. This second volume of the Symposium series focuses on media art centers and festivals. With the help of invited speakers, experts from the field, we want to open a space for critical debate on the transformation that domestic and international uh, art festivals and media centers have undergone and are still undergoing in response to radically changed conditions for the organization of social cultural events. Uh, our aim is to discover how uh, how have the proven curatorial practices and methods of organizing art festivals applied in the pre-COVID-19 pandemic changed in response to COVID and the post-COVID situation respectively? Which strategies do new media art festivals use for communication with their audiences and how are the audiences responding to the changed conditions under which they are attending to cultural events in this new world? In the context of this debate, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to present our today's speakers, uh, and I will do in the order of appearance during our today's program. Our first speaker, uh, first presenter, will be Clio Krajewska. Clio is a member of the Bro Art Center program, program team, a curator specialized in conceiving, producing, and promoting contemporary art and digital art exhibitions and events. She regularly collaborates with Ro Media Art Biennale in Poland, where she curates exhibitions, performances, and conferences. Since 2018, Clio has been head of new media art development at Waterman's Art Center in London. She's the vice, vice chair, uh, vice chair of the collective MU based at La Station uh, Gare des Mines in Paris. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, and also member of the Sur Mesur Collective for a curator residency program in Paris. Cleo lives and works in Paris. Her talk entitled Reverso in the, or, uh, the other side of being connected will address this year's Bro Biennale. Its program is a search for answers by developing a number of its own practices in response to the closing of the possibility of experiencing contact with works, shared experience and reception. In the preparation for this latest edition of the Biennale Bro, the issues of hybrid activity and limitation of participation in the new physical world, difficult Difficulties in direct contact with art and artistic events were particularly emphasized. New questions appeared. How to overcome the limits of digitization of culture, extracting from, from it what is most valuable without making the viewer a consumer of network content? Clio's talk will be seeking answers to 
how to maintain uh, the attention of the viewer deprived of community experience and saturated with network stimuli. Today's second speaker is Shimon Stemplevsky. Shimon is the president of the board of the Art, uh, Art, Arte Foundation. Artist, film programmer, creator and curator of multiple film, cultural and artistic projects. Founder of ISFF Shortwaves Festival, constellation of cinematic events scattered around Poznan urban la landscape. He is teaching the organization of cultural events at Collegium Da Vinci in Poznan, Poland. His talk entitled The Bubble, Chances and Challenges of Online Programming, will address primarily the challenges shortwave festivals is currently faced with. Shortwave festival and its representative entity, the Arte Foundation, since the beginning of the global COVID-19 pandemic, has shifted a great deal of its activities to the online environment. Many variants were tested from organizing the festival in a hybrid forms to the creation of the This is Short platform within the European Short Film Network. The organizers were faced with a lot of problems and challenges, not only of a technical, but also of a programming aspect. More in Shimon's talk later in this program. And finally, uh, today's symposium program uh, is also honored to welcome Crystal Bauer, the head of the Arts Electronica Festival, researcher with an interdisciplinary background in art history, cultural management, and natural science. She is particularly interested in the conjunction of aesthetic and social practices that center on collaboration and experimentation and challenge dominant social, political, and economic protocols. Her research field encompasses topics such as video art, new media technologies, computer art, biotechnology and interactive art. She works at the nexus of art and science. Over recent years, she has curated, produced and delivered large scale exhibitions and performances, research, residency and publication projects, most recently in cooperation with universities and scientific associations such as Google Arts and Culture, Microsoft, Hyundai, as well as the Chinese University of Art Beijing. Krista's talk entitled Digital End and Life will address the challenges that uh, the Linz uh, Festival Arts Electronica is faced with in the 21st century, where specifically two main things are needed for the festival to tackle those challenges, the freedom to act and the ability to act. The digitization doesn't change our world, but it does, however, radically change how and what we can or must deal uh, with in it. Uh, in 2021, Ars Electronica is looking for a new digital deal. The question of what we want to use uh, new technologies for and how will be addressed today by Crystal based on the dual event that builds on the experiences of 2020 festival and takes place both on site and online together with partners in more than 80 places on all five continents. Perhaps you have uh, uh, you, you have uh, uh, noted that uh, our today's guest speakers come from festivals of very different scale, history, dramaturgy, volume of visitors or even geographical location. I believe that such variability uh, of the background will provide a great and uh, vital opportunity to understand the methods and strategies used by various European festivals to mediate and distribute the program within the current changed environment. Before we start, let me just uh, make a note on some technical aspects of today's event. Uh, each speaker has a designated time for his or her presentation, about 35 to 40 minutes. And after each presentation, we will allow for questions for the, from the audience before the next speaker starts. Please use the YouTube and Facebook uh, live streaming channels for that. Uh, after the last presentation ends, which means after Crystal Bauer's presentation plus the questions from the audience, we will continue with the roundtable discussion with all of our speakers present. The roundtable scheduled uh, starts 
is at 4.25 p.m. roughly. Uh, again, should there be any burning questions from the audience, I will be happy to address them uh, for you during the roundtable discussion. And now, it is my pleasure to invite uh, our first speaker, Cleo Krajewska, to take the floor uh, for the presentation entitled Reverso, the other side of being connected. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Cleo Krajewska. Thank you very much, Monica, for the introduction. Thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this panel. Um, I'll, you, you presented me very, very, very well, but I kind of feel the need to um, to, to repeat some elements of of uh, of uh, where I'm uh, where I'm working, not because I want to. Um, uh, again, uh, focus on my CV, but also because I navigate in a very particular ecosystem, and also for the Vro Biennale, it will be important to um, th th to work with other institutions that I'm also involved with. So, um, so yes, so I am a member of the curatorial team of Vro, and mainly in this capacity, I'm participating in this panel um, today. Uh, but as you already said, I'm also head of um, New Media Arts at Waterman's Art Centre, which is in London, in very west, uh, west, uh, extreme west of London, uh, in a very particular neighbourhood. Actually, when you think think about London, everything happens in the centre or in the east, and we are located in the west. Uh, Waterman's is um, so. I'm currently in London, actually, right now. I'm currently at Waterman's. Uh, second time after 18 months of absence and working only remotely. Um, so in kind of a post-pandemic, post-apocalyptic office, <laughs> empty office that I found to be able to lock myself up in. <laughs> and uh, I'm here because we are preparing a new, a new show that, yeah, that is due to open to the public um, tomorrow night. Um, but so it's a West London community oriented, a very much like uh, community rooted and community engaged um, art centre focused on participation and community cohesion and and, th and things like that. And and the, there's a very particular thing about Waterman's is that the main gallery is um, exclusively dedicated to new media arts. So it's a very uh, hybrid space. We have a theatre uh, with I don't know cabaret or or, or stand-up comedies or things like that. And and then next to it we have the new media art gallery that is exclusively dedicated to the program. Program, uh, that I'm responsible for, um, and and the and this new media arts were always in the DNA, the very DNA of the of the institutions from the very um, uh, very beginning. And also, it's important to say that um, Waterman's is one of the only institutions, very few institutions in in London and in Greater London, exclusively dedicated to new media art. And also, as you said, I'm also a curator in residency right now in Paris. Paris is a city where, where I live. Um, it's called Madev, and it is another type of an institution. It's um, it's more like of a of an artist-run space. It's a it's a part of a Trans Europe Hall network. Uh, so they bring together like more like grassroots cultural centers. So and it all started when they converted abandoned industrial buildings. So the Madev is one of the all big industrial building, building converted to the art center and it's you know art center seen as a place for creativity and imagination um and it this place is also digital culture oriented let's say more, maybe more diy and 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 yeah grassroots digital and um and, and things like that so um so so i'm and i'm like precising kind of this three different completely different kind of maybe not completely different but kind of different kinds of uh, institutions that are digital oriented digital art or media art because uh, we will see that in the pandemic times we will also try to find ways to collaborate together so um so yeah but we are talking about um mainly about the Vrobiennale. so the Vrobiennale, it's uh, one of the leading 
international art festival in Central Europe and in this part of Europe, um, uh, 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 especially. And um, well, the biggest, we will also examine the, the, the notion of big, what does it mean to be big? Because this is also what the Probiennale is about this, this, this year and one, why, one, why it's called reversal. Um, so Bro started in 89, so um, uh, 30 years ago, 32 years ago, um, and some editions of it, so it grew bigger and bigger, and some of the editions of, it, of the Biennale had 200 artists, 17 or 18 venues around the city. Um, so um so 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 if you if you can you can imagine i mean i don't want to show you pictures as well because i would want just you know you, you we all can imagine this huge uh, international packed with people packed with artworks installation artists uh performances uh, uh situation uh like the ideal situation of the golden age of the of the uh big um also big biennales like this so um, so, of course, during all these years, the 30 years of the existence of the Biennale, the definition of media art, new media art, there's a big discussion of what is new, new media art, media art, digital, electronic art, or 50, we've celebrated 50 years of electronic art. So, um, obviously, uh, all these um, notions uh, evolved a lot, and, and this is not what, what we will discuss here today, but um, uh, Vro started as a place to show all forms of art, like in 89, it started as a first um, forum to show uh, art forms that couldn't find their place in the classic traditional, I don't know, cinema festivals or music or classical music or contemporary music festivals. Um, so everything that has been, you know, like experimental or on the edge of two different medias or, or using new tools like um, video cameras that's starting to appear uh, uh, at the time. So, 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 so everything that couldn't find its place in the traditional, the, the official scene, um, and and what, what was shown in the places like apartments or artist run space or uh, informal squats or whatever. So um, so so yeah. So it was the world most welcome to 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 be part of the Robiennale, uh, and also you know the, the history of the Robiennale is the history of new media arts, you know media arts in Poland as well. Actually, it's extremely uh, tight up together uh, like the first catalog on cd-rom it was raw the first website festival website was it was raw and, and things like that so um um but what hasn't changed this is this is this let's say that this will be the starting point of, of my presentation what hasn't changed is that all through all these years actually participating in a big um ev events like this we search for the same thing we we search for i mean we, this is why we are uh, participating at the festival like this we want to uh, being together networking sharing an experience uh seeing artworks in perspective seeing ourselves with others, seeing ourselves in a perspective of our artworks, um, see, see, it's a very specific context, context, context. and I think um, what um, uh, we, we as, a, as a Biennale, as a festival, we were uh, constrained to search through, I mean, after the, the pandemic started, is how do we recreate conditions for um, this um, for this shared experience and and more than how do we show something to the audience yeah so uh, we were very lucky because our 30 years anniversary um, the, the the biggest huge culmination of 30 years work happened in 2019 in May 2019 it was you know a, a huge luck for us because um, if it has been for example scheduled for 2020 well we we it's a biennale, so it's an imper year, but uh, it was 29, 20, uh, 29, so we didn't have any uh, issues with that, you know, everything went as planned, it was huge, it was amazing and, 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 and fantastic, but we already knew that after celebrating 30 years, there will be possibly something that we will need to change, that you can't measure the growth I mean, you, you can, yeah, you can't just apply the, the same like the growth um, measurements to 
to, to, to measure the quality of your event. I mean, why would you qualify your, why would you always seek for more artists, more venues, more artworks, more, you know, travels, more um, COD emissions and, and things like that. So we already started the um, reflection on how do, how can we, persist as a, as a biennale yeah o also in the context of proliferations of the different biennales and can how can we um how, how can you know there is some there is a problem when you when you address environmental questions and then you still generates um uh, 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 the, the environmental uh, emissions and environmental costs so so um so we already started to 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 think um about a way out of it um we need we felt a need for a change um um yeah we, we want we knew that the constant growth in quantity is not the way we wanted to continue so that the, the, the formula was finished formula was ending um um, and yeah, and then boom, the, the, the pandemic started and everything accelerated actually for everybody, not only for us, <laughs> but for everywhere in the world, for everybody. Um, uh, so yeah, so it kind of helped, uh, it's happened in, in parallel. Um, uh, so um, of course, when a pandemic, started we needed to act very quickly and everybody like everybody especially uh, art institutions and especially in digital uh, well we had to respond quickly so many of us and I'm, now I'm speaking from like perspective of me working in several, several institutions well essentially everybody rushed to provide something to provide some program or to 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 have an offer or to a, be able to offer something to the audiences um and uh well for for, for raw of course we started immediately uh putting some archives online like one archive a day uh, was it a documentation or a um a video or or, or something like that and i'm talking of, about the as an institution because uh, in in march i mean in 2020 there was is a, it, it, it's a year without the biennale but it's a preparative year so we are already working usually we always obviously working on the next edition on the 2021 20, edition so in preparation for the for the new edition coming that we knew already that will be different um we yeah we 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 did something um well, it, it, which shows that we didn't all only think about how to present things to the audience, but also how to in how to engineer things differently, um, how to create tools immediately, tools for a shared um, experience. And um, at the Vro team, we we are lucky to have uh, uh, one of the member of the of the uh, of the team of the curatorial team who is an artist himself. His name is Paweł Janicki. Um, and he suddenly uh, got more time <laughs> to develop projects that and ideas that had already been uh, uh, somewhere in the sphere of oh one day we should do this and that and and one day <laughs> it was in the first lockdown between March and May 2012 because uh, 2020 because um, uh, suddenly. Uh, uh, the institution also changed also the, the, the orientation. So we thought, okay, um, we always wanted to develop a series of softwares, interactive softwares that we could share with our audiences. And this is a perfect moment to do this. Um, so let me show, well, th th this, th these, are, these are small, we call it miniatures, these are small softwares um, that uh, Pavel developed for VRO, uh, especially in the context also with the work with younger audiences, with children, with families. Um, but when, when we um, uh, 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 developed them and when we shared with, with, with audiences, it, it, it was, yeah, it was the perfect time to, to play at home. Families could play at home with it. We could show people how to use them. And yeah, and I will show you some of them. Um, um so um 
essentially some of them are online and they are you you can use them with your camera and microphone actually and the interactivity is generated by the by the use of either of gestures either of sound um, some of them have another um, version that can be used in the gallery with a sensor movement sensor. Um, some of them uh, you can use at home. It's a very different, many different um, uh, uh, versions. But let me show. Um, uh, let me show. Uh, uh, let me show you one of them. Was it here? Yes. So um, well. Uh, um, I'll be able also or, or, or later maybe to share links with people that would be with some some of the from some of you would be interested. Everything is on the website of the Vro website. Okay, so let me share your my screen and show you some of these uh, softwares that we developed. Um, Yes. All right. So it's on the um, uh, on the website at mawevrocenter.pl. Where it's not mail evrocenter.pl. Uh, it's um, mawe, which means small in in Polish. So it's nothing to do with with mail. Um, but let me show. Let's say this. Um, this installation so um so it uses you need to uh, enable your camera and uh to 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 enable your camera and tap to start and on my screen you can see me interacting with it now playing creating image and sound Um, if I go to another one, um, that one, for example, it's a, um, the same style. Same style, kind of um, theremin style instrument. Um, and then also there are um, other tools like drawing, like uh, based on a fractal um, design. So drawing, you can draw your your forest, um, and this you can do um, at home if you want to. And also, we had a gallery version that you could use um, the sensors in the in the gallery and use movement of your of your of your body. Uh, so, yeah. Um, let me. Yeah, let me go back. Yeah. So, so, so this is this is this is a, these are the, the the miniatures, and um, so this we 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 start playing with this um, very um, well. You, 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 well, uh, how to put it? Uh, as as uh, you, you, if, uh, I'm sure you noticed that like the um, the the um, change of scale. So we are this huge Biennale engaging with thousands of artists and thousands of visitors, etc. And actually, immediately we switch to the very very close contact contact with the very uh, individual uh, um, viewer that we wanted to reach to, and. Um, and 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 this is when and how the also the general reflection of the uh, redesigned formula of the Biennale started. So instead of having everything in the same week, like um, all the people, all, all all of the installations, all of the exhibitions opening on the same day, but obviously, of course, some of them lasted 
for for two or three months afterwards. But 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 up to now, up to 2021, uh, the formula was uh, yeah was was that um, everything had to take place in one week in May, and then to continue through the year probably. But that the main the, the, the core of it was concentrated in one particular time and place. Um, so um, so we redesigned this formula. So we, st we, we thought, okay, so let's make events happen, happen sequentially instead of parallelly. Let's do not mix. Let's just, you know, the arrow of time appeared. And we said, okay, so in May we will open an exhibition. In June we will have a night of performances, let's say. Uh, in in uh, July we will have another exhibition opening. Uh, then we will have another event and another. And, and actually the, the Rob Biennale 2021 is still ongoing and it's it's still on until uh, the end of the year, until uh, the end of December this year. Um, so, um, so, so also it enabled a different um, a, pro, a different uh, possibility for the audiences to engage with it because it's it's another thing when you see everything simultaneously, and it's another thing if you see if you go go to see, go to see or if you if you engage with an exhibition and then it stays in your mind and then you go to go and see another exhibition and you think oh okay so there was this is how the ideas from the previous one expanded into that one and this is the links that I can create and this is something that you can't achieve when you have everything Everything in one time and place. Um, so it builds up on the previous. The, the, the experience of the new thing builds up on the on the pre, on the previous thing. Um, so um, yeah. Um, before I speak about the exhibition, the, the project, the the, the, co the concrete project of the um, um, of this year's um, uh, Biennale, I wanted to show you maybe quicker that I thought I will show you the graph. Show you the graph. Is it here? Yeah, this is the graph. Because this is also how we started. This is another way we started this reflection. Oh yeah, sorry, I need to enable the, um, the screen again. Um, so this is the graph, and actually this uh, appeared as some as a tool, internal curatorial tool for knowing who is participating in which exhibition, where they are coming from, how they are related to each other, and actually it became an integral part of the um, of the Biennale. So it's present. So so the 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 the, the, the graph. Um, shows all of the participants, all of the coordinators, also the curators, that's the countries that our uh, artists are coming from. Um, and, um, and, and yeah, it has been created to put some order into, let's say, yeah, the chaotic richness of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the works and people that are uh, taking part in the, in the, in the Biennale. But, but actually this is, Something that became an integral part of the um, of, of the ex of exhibitions, and um, an artist also get a personalized version of the graph as a, like a souvenir from raw to 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 situate ourselves in the in the uh, in this map in this uh, cartography. So um, I'm showing it because um, it it roots us somewhere and it show our connections. It's not. Uh, you know, it's not like it, it's it's less important what the graph really does or not. I can show you, for example, if I if I take um, if I take um, I need to yeah. So if I take I can change the speed to be a little bit maybe less speed less fast, and then if I take one person, I um, first of all see I can see how they are connected to others. Then I can just click on it and have them uh, their their website so it's not about what the graph really like does or does not do but uh the character up oh, sorry maybe i will just go back to I will just go back to the mode. Yeah. So the character of the community, how much the community is something that is the most important thing in what we are doing as the, 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 the as an artistic event. Like um, like this is the base of the digital reality, actually. So um, 
So although you are, it shows how 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 digital you became, but also how rooted you are. So that sim symbolically, it's a, it's a symbol. It symbolically adds to the discussion about digitization. So when I um, uh, maybe uh, when I spoke about the redesign formula um, as one of the pillars of this of this year's formula of the Biennale. I need to speak about the reversal redux program. So reversal redux program is an idea of having cross-streamed events um, with another institution in in another country or in another city. So because we can't gather every every we can't bring everyone to Wrocław and and have international performances in one place in Wrocław, we said okay, so we can partner up with in another institution um, and have a cross stream with audience if possible of course if the restriction allow to 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 have audiences so we did it several times in krakow first the first was in krakow the second was one was um the connection with verklites and the third one was with waterman so the very place that i'm sitting here right now sitting in right now so um i can um uh, I tell you how how and I show you some documentation about how it went with 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 Watermans. So the idea is, was to have well the general idea of it is to have one or several performance streamed to one venue and then a f from venue A to venue B and then from venue B to venue A. So from raw to the other venue and the other way around and several times if necessary, depends on how many performance they are on the day and to have audience because again, um, the, 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 what we, what is really important for us is the shared experience, the shared emotions, the shared consciousness of the moment in real time. And believe me, it's a completely different thing when you sit in a room full of people, full of people, with some people in the room <laughs> with the restrictions that we had, but with people in the room and you, and you, even, even if it's a live stream, you, uh, you, 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 you can uh, feel the same effect on you when, when it's the artist, the artist, artist performing, artist performing the, um, uh, the, the, the um, frontier between them, are, it's, it's really quite, quite blurry. So, um, so you can extract really what, so we tried to transcend, transcend the limitations and extract what's the most valuable. Um, so, so of course where there are some there are many technical things around this because uh, maybe if we have some time I can talk about this later but so we had um, two performances streamed from Raw to Watermans and from Watermans to Raw we had the Anna Nazo uh, performance Swerve um, and this work is a it's a it's a constru it's constructed it's a like virtual real digital physical dreamy spoken word poetry with artificial artificial intelligence with computer generated sound and image cgi and from her brain waves data uh, eeg and what's the most important she has a performance companion which is a drone so let me show you some documentation from it um yes We maybe have to go back. Yeah. So, so the structure of it is that we have. Uh, so, so we start with the with the pa information panel. Then there is people introducing from both venues. Then there is, and then there is actual stream, and we have audiences in different in different in two different venues and online. Right? I think I need to precise that also it has been streamed live online as well in the same time simultaneously. So so this is the Anna Nazo performance from Watermans to Poland. Let me show you an, a part of it. Temporalities. Long drizzle. Dimension of dread. Penicillin logic. Heart. Earth. Peace in despair. 
redeem velvet pain plasma dreams all permission to green veins sanification escape deafening whisper whistling of blue flesh subatomic shells Um, and and what's uh, important to stress is that actually the fact that it was trans a transmission. So I was here at Waterman's, um, but my colleagues at RAW and the audiences at RAW uh, got the the version that I just show you. So multiple points of views, several cameras, uh, 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 real time editing, and actually the version that they got on their screens in Poland was even more complete or, 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 and I'm not saying that it was better than the actual performance here is what at Waterman because you can't compare I'm just saying that the fact that it was a transmission added to the experience and not sub subtracted from it um, and um, yeah um, and, and yeah but w w if we have some time later I I'd be happy to touch uh, also about the th technical uh, aspects of it because it is it, there is a very much imp important and interesting lessons to to learn from this kind of experience um, I just wanted to show you another uh, uh, a completely different way uh, of uh, um, a, a different artwork um, I, 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 that we that we showed at Vraw this year, which is uh, Piotr Wierzykowski Temporary Nation, and it's a choreography of gesture. Uh, so it's um, actually it's a project in public space, in public space, and then in the gallery, and the choreography of gestures performed by the participants with the help of smartphones, but not as a smartphone as a, some a, a tool that you have your nose in, but uh, a, a smartphone that uh, a tool um, that 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 helps uh, with. with which you can connect and use your your gestures actually and movement and you can co co uh, generate a collective um, sound and movement situation so um, so your personal device is not uh, used in a usual way let's say and also it's an event that happens collectively but in a public space so also in terms of restrictions so let's don't forget the restrictions were changing all the bloody time so once you were able to uh, do the stuff uh, in the gallery the next day you couldn't the next day it was outside so 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 this is um a, a, a something that 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 it t takes pla t took place in we took very much advantage we always organized things in public space since many 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 years but but this is also the aspect that uh, the, the public space was what was our friend in that in in that particular curial context as well um, and yeah so this is the uh, let me show the documentation this also demonstrates the agency of the um, realm of social media and um, and yeah this is uh, 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 let, let me show you some documentation right now uh -huh. um, here oh. just a second sure solo <laughs>
yeah and um and then um the the um, the march let's say the demonstration uh went back to the gallery so um to generate the the the, the um to, to continue generating this audiovisual composition so it looked like this <laughs> So, so, so as I said, the Biennale of Raw is ongoing, and there is many other uh, things that are coming. There is another reverse redux um, project uh, that we are uh, preparing for December for Paris. So there will be um, also a, a cross-streaming event from this time between Wrocław and Paris, and it will be a, a little bit a different thing because it, in that case, one of the performances will be actually played from Paris on a computer specially prepared computer with special software. Um, so artists will be uh, actually playing in the same time on their computer for the Parisian audience uh, and for online maybe. And um, and in the same time, on another computer or the same computer twice that it will be located also in Poland. And, um, and so it's a completely different preparation because we need to prepare the computer first. We need to have uh, the software installed. We need to have uh, a sound engineer to 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 to, to uh, supervise that during the concert. So it's another different. It's not only only I'm saying only because this is what we experimented already, <laughs> which is having a computer team, a camera a camera team, and streaming team, and several cameras cameras. And it's like audiovisual production, like uh, like a TV set that we broad, are broadcasting live. This time it's another kind of connection and that ubiquity that you can achieve uh, within this shared experience, international shared experience of, of the Biennale. Um, so this is what is upcoming. Uh, there is also another, uh, the same, this, similarly, the next day we will be having um, the uh, 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 also the connection with Japan, with Fukuoka, which also will imply uh, artists collaborating online real time, like a DJ and an artist playing together at the same at the same time. Um, so this is um, about the program of VRO. I'm very happy also to discuss um, not maybe not like the technicalities of it, but uh, how um, two or, or several different venues can collaborate on this because it's a the, the reversal redux program it was a very ambitious um way our way to say okay we want to do it like this and also assuming that other institutions are also agile that they can respond to that that they can connect with us that you know that it's not that difficult to um uh to um uh, 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 connect and and to and to create this shared experience together and that they are ready to experiment and they are ready to experiment in the way that we invite them to so um so yeah um also um well yeah maybe i'll just finish here we'll finish here i wanted to show you also a digital a completely new digital space that i created for 
um, for Waterman's, but maybe later during the discussion or something like that. Yeah, so I'll just maybe finish here. I think my time is up. Thank you very much. Um, hello, Monica, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I accepted it uh, with a certain shyness uh, because nowadays I observe um, processes we doing uh, um, in the foundation and festival from a little bit outside. And uh, when I generate the, the staff or program, you know, it's uh, now in the hands of uh, director of our festival, Emilia Magic, and the coordinator of, of pro the program, uh, Alexandra Wawska. But uh, I'm thinking maybe, you know, this little distance uh, can be a good starting point for some um, reflection, you know, on the topic uh, online programming or doing um, culture, uh, audiovisual events in this um, um, environment. So uh, I entitled it uh, the bubble. So let me take you to my bubble. Yes. So uh, I've been today drawing a little bit for you. So you know, it's like I thinking it's a, it's kind of. Uh, old school uh, stuff, but you know, I think can be a little bit, you know, different to to our guests who are from more like new media um, uh, um, areas. So uh, the bubble uh, chances and challenges of online programming, you know, so I think it's um, something what uh, really it's important for all uh, festival, all organizers, and all of us looking for new ways to, you know, be with uh, our audience, be with uh, artists uh, in our um, uh, like about like short film festival. It's mainly like filmmakers. So uh, I'm thinking like uh, the, it's the, the bubble, but maybe you know we can name it uh, as well like kind of uh, uh, yeah okay i'm thinking we can start from something like that is the bubble but you know when we can try to put ourselves somewhere in that bubble and uh I think a very important thing is the kind of process is generate into creating festivals, events, something. So this is like the bubble. This is process. And I think like for me, the most important thing is change what is can happen during this uh, actions. So uh, change, change has accelerated on a very la large scale, you know, in these days of pandemic. Uh, and uh, but uh, it um, like um, in in our case, talking about you know short cinema and uh, what we're doing, you know, and uh, like uh, 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 short, short film festivals, like um, online festivals, nothing new. They was uh, organized by years, but I think nobody treated them seriously. It was more like something, you know, um, what uh, we can criticize but I think we don't analyze. So the chance, you know, to be in this uh, digital, virtual environment, somehow, you know, we skip, we um, try to be 
how uh, strong we we can into the um, kind of uh, uh, offline experience to create you know very nice content uh, find the context for for what are we doing so um, when uh, at the beginning of the pandemic uh, when I'm presented uh, our team the vision uh, what uh, can happen in you know in future and uh, start talking about uh, possibilities to um, doing stuff in uh, hybrid um, form or uh, online you know it was kind of um, really it, it was mm, not uh, uh, very a nice welcome and I um, uh, I think like uh, uh, almost everybody say you know it's not something real we need to to do real festival and these things uh, online is kind of uh, I think um, really artificial it's it's uh, it's it's not works so um, but you know very fast it changed and uh, I, I think it was good because you know many uh, organization institution in the time of the beginning of uh, pandemic go to the kind of uh, hibernation mode and uh, almost stop uh, doing things and slowly slowly they tried you know to to work with uh, new possibilities new perspectives new audience and uh, I think it's good, you know, to go to the chronology, how it looks uh, at uh, our practice. So we go to the next drawing. I like, would like work with. Yeah, so, you know, it's like kind of experiment for me. I hope you know it works. It's not so boring like my talking head. So it all started in 2020. It's uh, March. And the uh, situation like for us was really difficult because our festival was planned for mid of March. Everything all, almost uh, uh, ready for, um, uh, for the festival. Uh, you know how it works, it's like a few months really hard work and uh, we start to observe signals like you know in, to do uh, offline uh, festival um, uh, where it be possible so um, we uh, start you know to, to thinking what to do and uh, in the in the end you know we um when, when we postponed our festival to august uh, we decided like we need to be very active from the beginning to do um like on, on the short film scene as well like like foundation and the festival so like first thing very interesting project what happened in the time it was uh, my darling quarantine film festival a short film festival um, started by enrico vanucci and it was and with a really big help of many many friends from whole um, short film circuit as well um, organization uh, called talking uh, shorts as well our festival is part of that so it started in a uh, 16 of uh, March we started here my my darling quarantine really nice name and uh, it was a kind of a weekly short film uh, program and it was run for 11 weeks and uh, um, I want to give you some numbers because it was really amazing like uh, 
this uh, festival prepared 66 programmers and uh, it uh, was uh, 77 films uh, made by 87 filmmakers so you know like really huge uh, thing and um, it was for free many many you know uh, it, it generated like kind of big audience for whole um, the world because you know as well was kind of good uh, uh, promo um, action of, of, of this festival and uh, as well it was like interesting because you know uh, every programmer um, can offer two, uh, two films and uh, kind of selection community building every week uh, program. So it was like first thing, uh, quite successful as well, you know, I think very helpful for um, like many people from the industry to showing we can be active, we can do things. It can be useful, so I think it was like really good starting point, and as well it was kind of support for people who during like this uh, first wave on pandemic was uh, um, really into the action and uh, help us to survive. So this uh, program as well collect some money to to help them, and uh, like next thing happened in um, May. And uh, it was uh, um, our program prepared with uh, um, from uh, 20 to 25 May, and uh, it called short short waves online, short waves online, and uh, we made it with uh, Nina Teka. It's kind of uh, Polish uh, National Audiovisual Archives. And uh, it was very interesting thing because we um, came back to the roots because this program was uh, built with, uh, you know, almost every genre we can find in a short film. So it was uh, a fiction, documentary, animation, experimental films as well, and a video clip. So um, very um, interesting, you know, combination of, of, of things. And uh, we um, uh, give chance uh, to audience to, to vote. And uh, as well, it, it generates a lot of like, very good numbers. Probably it was as well uh, uh, connected to um, it was like beginning of this um, online uh, festivals, online presentation, and uh, so it was quite successful. And uh, what what happened next? You know, it uh, we come to August, and uh, the tricky thing about that is like that is like from 18 to 23rd of August, uh, we have uh, like a hybrid short ways uh, festival edition and uh, we try you know to do a little bit smaller festival and uh, um, to, to a little bit you know uh, cut numbers of screenings uh, industry programs uh, special events uh, so on so on but uh, still you know to move all the stuff to um online you know to prepare the streamings it was like crazy huge uh, work to do and uh this kind of uh, myth for us like we um still were thinking in the time like uh, everything is ready no uh, we need made like for we can say like third festival because you know first was prepared for march second little one uh, happened in May and in August we made like next thing and uh, it um, you can say generate a lot of failures and uh, like for me it uh, from my personal point of view when I am creating completely a new thing called um, um, hybrid uh, 
the post pandemic uh, future online plus minus offline i tried you know to to check to to try uh, the kind of limitation and tensions between you know online and offline i, I show you a few pictures from the time Oops. so yeah it's uh, first of them and you know you see it's like um, we made it in uh, in Poznan in the Concordia design space nice to prepare this kind of uh, audiovisual events and uh, it was um, some uh, um, artist uh, uh, experts invited to the um, to the space but as well we have some speakers who um, were online we have only with them connection uh, via internet and uh, um, so and, and as well it was um, in real time streaming you know we can see that you know almost everywhere if you know about that and you have time and, and will to do it here you know it's kind of um Shamalinowska, one the philosopher from adam Miskiewicz university in uh, poznan and uh, on the screen we have our performer misha zurek who was performing in uh, uh, space uh, what was uh, um um, because it was like two two big, uh, big big spaces and so she was on the side and you know but we have her on the screen you know present during the the, the whole thing and uh this um like whole things i think you know like for some people was uh um, like interesting for some was like to be chaos for me now, I think it was kind of like we can really again we back to the past, and uh, it was like kind of data stuff, you know. Like uh, we try to really, you know, like uh, try something new to do it in not really control way, you know, like to try uh, check how it really works. But of course, you know, it uh, show us uh, how much we need to uh, prepare. To do it like in the proper way because you know it's if we want to do it um, how was our how were um, our, our our plan uh, it um, need to be prepared maybe like you know tv program when we have you know researchers we have people who prepared you know scenario uh, some like director you know, not only like uh, free curators who are from different, you know, um, areas, art, film, culture, and we try, you know, to like an experimental way to check how it works. So if you want to do it like really smooth, you need the budget, you need a lot of people, and maybe it can happen, you know, like uh, um, good or can be you know uh, for for everybody uh, welcome okay and uh, here i want to now i want to go to next thing you know it's like i think as well interesting example because you know uh, after this kind of for some people traumatic you know experience we decided a little bit to hack digital um practices and move you know them to offline mode and we made um, kind of uh, event uh, based on mainly performing uh, uh, art and we called them life in loops so we created some loops you know maybe like as well to create kind of uh, bubble like here and uh, it's it, it was like um, I think very very interesting for the audience and uh, as well refreshing after you know it was on, on the Sunday morning in the end of the festival and show like we still really need kind of human touch and uh, yeah so it's um, like uh, our our tries you know to 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 showing you know 
um, many possibilities, but as well, you know, not going only in, in one direction. And uh, so we now come back to our chronology. Mm -hmm. yes. So it uh, is still in 2020. On the end, we made uh, uh, good. Uh, okay, so I have like some, you know, problem here with my drawing, but you know, I, I, I try, you know, to to close like 2020. We made second wave on the um, short waves online. So it was similar uh, thing, maybe less uh, um, experimental and, and based on, you know, fiction and documentary films. Uh, and we made it one day um, in the end of the year. And it was, uh, as, as I think it's good to, to mention, we uh, made the, the, the festival in August as, as well this, uh, Shortwave's uh, second uh, wave uh, uh, using film chief platform. It's a um, go short uh, festival from uh, Netherlands. Uh, they prepare a kind of tool. It's very useful, you know, to to do things. Uh, and I show you this kind of uh, possibilities in the while when we move to 2021. So, okay, so now it can work. Wow. Oh my God, something not going so good. See, I always generate some tension into this online situation. Sorry, Monica, I hope uh, I find you know solution to do it proper. Yeah, we come back. It's um, 2021 and uh, here uh, we started uh, with uh, European Short Film Network, uh, which is kind of um, association uh, created by four short film festivals, a short film, uh, International Short Film Festival Oberhausen, Go Short from Nijmegen, uh, Vienna Shorts, and our festival um, uh, Short Waves. We created a together thing called This is Short. And uh, this really uh, something nice and strong tool to promo uh, not only like the festivals, I give them chance to show uh, our content, but as well it was a uh, um, uh, possibility, you know, to check many new options for uh, online programming, to share content, to do um, new stuff. And uh, it's, um, I show you how it uh, looks uh, on uh, FameChief platform. Yeah, so you know, it's um, a design uh, created by Uniforma graphic design studio from Poznań who is cooperated with us. So um, it was of course prepared for almost every, um, like as, as well like for smartphones, for um, iPads, for, you know, computers, you can everywhere can be with short film and uh, show uh, and, 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 and check uh, uh, the um, newest uh, films and uh, what, what was interesting, like from the way of programming, um, the main uh, competition generated in this platform called New Point of uh, View uh, was um, uh, created, I think, in a new way. Like uh, every festival 
proposed some films, uh, and uh, it was not um, uh, like was not kind of uh, on the end uh, one programmer or you know community, but it was we created kind of mixture of films, and uh, uh, so I think maybe it was. Uh, was less constant but more fresh and you have like chance to see to, to, to see things like sometimes you know are not good uh, into like the whole thing and we you know cut them because you want to build kind of line you want to tell kind of the story and you know some uh, you know pieces sometimes you know we reduce because you want we, we don't want to create the mess in this um, uh, competition, it was chance to present, you know, films uh, who sometimes, you know, can be uh, missed. So uh, one thing, second thing, very interesting, you know, project uh, uh, program by every festival called Four Perspectives uh, uh, on Sol Soli Solidarity, and every festival prepared own uh, um, program and was. Uh, Mm, topics like uh, uh, women rights are human rights, generations, new topographies, or uh, standing with uh, those who have no rights. So like as well, fresh, you know, uh, social uh, topics we, we, we want to show, we want to discuss, we want to share with our audience. And uh, you can, you know, um, w like um, watch these films during a uh, um, few months when uh, uh, short, uh, this is short was uh, working. Show you next uh, presentation. Oops. It's uh, like four festivals yet. So I, I told you go show the Berhaus in Vienna in short waves. And uh, uh, as well, it, but it was not only four festivals, to be honest, because as well in this um, very important for us um, aspect to to share what are we doing as well with other players. So we invited nine other short film festivals and let them prepare programs without limits. They be free, you know, to give. Uh, as uh, content they, they want to, to share with uh, our international audience. And uh, next thing what happened in uh, 2021, so this year, is uh, Shortwave's uh, 13th edition, uh, Mirror Mirror, as well it's like touching this aspect of uh, offline and online like they you know uh, always are in kind of uh, um, kind of uh, my god they, they, they play with, with each other and exist in the in the kind of um, it's not like it's difficult you know, to create uh, online without uh, offline, so they exist together and they create many uh, new relations. So it happens uh, this time in uh, June, and uh, we, after this uh, hybrid uh, um, version of the festival in 2020, uh, fixing the future, we decided uh, we want, you know, to do it differently. And uh, we called like the short waves, it's uh, online and offline, but uh, it's, uh, it was, um, uh, we, we, choose a uh, few programs, uh, some competition to share with our audience to to make it uh, uh, more open and uh, um, um, like um, was more, more, more clear for, for our audience. So uh, it's it's this kind of the chronology and I we like uh, build like really um, 
kind of uh, we have a lot of uh, questions, some answers. After that, how we can you know um, creating uh, uh, new events, new editions of the festivals, new new things, uh, and uh, it's when we go to. Uh, next uh, situation. I want to show you like next bubbles. So uh, I'll do it. Yeah. So uh, it's when we are in the process of creating, we can like into that name, like for us, for Short Film Festival, very important. It's selection. So we we have opened now a submission to our festival, so so it's uh, we are doing the process, and the uh, uh, process of selection uh, it's few months when we uh, watching films. Uh, our you know uh, selection community is um, choosing the best thing films and uh, build uh, um, uh, final uh, competition programs from that. And uh, what is like part of that is like programming. As well of this of this process. So we can use some films what we selected or were not put in the competitions, but we want to as well share with our audience so we can use it. But as well, we, you know, bringing our content, you know, what is uh, um, not into the selection and uh, but still you know something based of on 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 on, on uh, film content and i think like third things you know in our universe exist it's uh, curating and here you know it's uh maybe a little from the selection but uh, you know we need to you know, uh, find the content, find like uh, as well a uh, way to to share things with people, you know, and uh, create uh, or design the experience. And here I'm thinking it's like uh, something uh, crucial. And uh, like uh, we haven't like big, you know, uh, um, chances, you know, to create like uh, user experience, you know, in a very high level. When we doing um, our things offline, you know, we have like cinemas, we have, you know, many spaces uh, dedicated to culture, audiovisual events. When we want to move, you know, to online, we need to create something new. So it's nice, but it's uh, mm, but it's a big challenge, you know. It generates as well many, many um, uh, challenges, and we need, you know, as well have the budget, you know, to do it in the proper way. Because many times, again, it's kind of exp we we need to um, do it like with a uh, uh, very small b budget without as well. Um, very strong e-commerce possibilities. So, you know, to get to our possible, uh, to, to our audience, it's, it's really limited, limited. So, uh, like, I'm thinking that the, one of the biggest questions we have about, you know, online programming is uh, um, how to select uh, program or curating uh, valuable content. This is, you know, like the very, very important question and uh, of course, we have here like talent, we have audience, and uh, not every 
time, you know, their interests are same, you know, and I think like our talents, filmmakers, was uh, or they are um, kind of victims of what's going on because you know uh, it's uh, like many organizers uh, of the festivals, you know, using their films in very strange way. They don't care about you know go blockade. They you know doing like showing it sometimes in very you know uh, low. Um, conditions, so it's, it's it's not nice. We need, you know, to you know um, when when we find a way to select program and curating, as well, you know, we need to be uh, conscious what are we doing and uh, uh, to 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 have every player. Uh, a chance to 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 show their works in good quality, and uh, as well like about, of course, mm, here as well we have uh, questions about chance to exchange. So you know, and, and it's not bad because you know, like for audience, like to as well how how to create uh, interactions. It's as well like between audience and and filmmakers to don't you know as like my matt lloyd you know from glasgow film festival shopping festival name it screaming into the void when we haven't in online like possibility you know to uh mm, oh it can think as well it's very important like press present uh how to you know um how to um, to do it in, in this uh, this situation, and uh, it's um, next next question. It's uh, um, what uh, to do to um, uh, make the people like our audience. They, they, they want, you know, to uh, be part of, uh, of our festival. And, you know, this kind of myth, like, you know, we, we are, when we can use internet and we can get to, to everybody of our content, this is completely wrong. And uh, we have, like, many little, you know, bubbles and uh, they are uh, creating our our content uh, uh, they are creating our audience so we need to be very um, conscious you know to and and looking for um, uh, nice ways how to connect them how to create you know new possibilities uh, for exchange and as well it's um, always, you know, we need to be clever. We need to um, using uh, our advantages and like about short film is like sh short time. So, you know, you can do it almost everywhere and you don't, don't need, you know, like to go to the cinema. You don't waste time uh, as well. You know, you need to uh, like uh, use uh, uh, topics are fresh, are working, like, you know, for example, climate, you know, uh, challenges, or, you know, like now still very fresh uh, things like kind of maybe I do like new screening, like new uh, picture is like mushrooms. Uh, very popular now, or, you know, when we going like to architecture or you know or or, or, or design, it's uh, it's uh, it's still the, the the chances you know to uh, reach our audience and as well like um, find new ways to to you know uh, make that that bigger and 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 stronger. All right, so slowly I'm going to the end. You know, it's uh, mm, like uh, 
I'm thinking um, the next thing we can uh, on the end. Um, I'm thinking, you know, it's like I think that the crucial question: what it's about, because you know, many times, you know, we. I think all the time we need to ask ourselves that a question when we want to create good uh, chance to to like to design you know like uh, right uh, experience and uh, of course you know when we have like the cinema you know it's uh, like screen speakers we have like audience you know this this thing you know is really well known and uh, uh, when we're going to online you have like many different you know um, tools you know to to be into the uh, into the film but or, or into into the, 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 the our content but this is uh, like as well is the, the, the question for the filmmakers you know how to create things like here is like really you know, high quality. When we're going here, the quality is, uh, you know, uh, smaller and smaller. You know, it's not, it, it, don't, it don't work like that. So, you know, we need to be conscious, you know, we need to looking for new ways to create uh, experience as well, like using uh, maybe VR, what, what we try to do it on, on the bigger scale on the time, because, you know, uh, we need um, uh, like uh, if you only like use um, um, not uh, new tools, we don't be um, uh, creative. The, the the thing we are doing don't be works uh, good. Okay, so I think it's. It's all, and I try come back to our screen. Okay. Oh, on the end, I can do something for you. So we are talking about moving pictures, so we do kind of the rip show reply. Okay, and I hope after that I can come back to our guest and host. Oh, yeah. Okay, so for me, it's the end. Okay, well, Thank you so much, dear Monica. Thanks so much to my fellow speakers already for opening up these topics in so many diverse perspectives and from so many diverse themes and relationships. I'm more than happy and very excited to be part of that panel. Thanks also to the technical team who supports us in such an incredible way. I will now share my screen and actually show you a bit of what we've done me and my team, of course, not by myself, um, in the past year. So now you should see my screen. Well, I'm working for the Ars Electronica Festival and um, it's actually, digitate. my title is Digital End and Life, and this is not a mistake. I will 
tell you a little bit more about this later in my presentation. But what is important is that digitization doesn't change our world, but it does, however, radically change how and what we can or must deal with in it. And that's why As Electronica decided this year's for a festival title, which is rather, rather unusual in that broadness, and it's called The New Digital Deal. And together with artists, scientists and activists from all around the world, we are calling for a fundamentally new approach to challenge the 21st century. And we especially want to look at the freedom of what it takes to act and also whether we as a society actually have the ability to act especially looking at our larger problems such as the ecological crisis and the social disruptions. And especially tackling this issue of what we also as individuals can do and what our role, especially as a festival, within, well, this action is this call to action, so to say. And before I go into my presentation, um, I would like to quickly say that my topic is not per se online curating, as, espe as especially the festival took place in a dual manner. And our topic, and for me, it's quite important that we as an organization, as a program, didn't vanish into online space. So online was part of our whole program, but definitely not the sole focus. And before I go into this year's festival, I would like to give you a very short overview of what Ars Electronica, especially the festival, is about and has been in the last years, because that's quite important to understand of also why we moved this year into a hybrid, into a dual festival space. Ars Electronica began as an experiment in art and communal politics, actually, uh, 42 years in 1979 in Linz, Austria, which is a lot of, lot, rather small city here. And ever since, it has become one of the, the best known forums, especially at this connection, at this nexus of art and science, um, and at the dis discourse concerning technological culture in our society. And before now, just uh, sorry, that was too much. I'd like to show you a video, but that is a video from 1979, from the very first festival. And it, um, it was when it was founded in the city between Salzburg and Vienna. Linz is right in the middle and Johannes Leopold Eder, who was the founder and at the same time the director of the national TV broadcasting company in Austria, um, they were looking, especially from the political side, they were looking for a transformation of the city as Linz itself was called also Steel City and was a rather polluted and dirty industrial city at the time. So more than 40 years ago, they decided to turn that city into a livable place through the means of culture. But being between Vienna and Salzburg, um, well, the, the capitals of high culture in Austria, it didn't make sense to open up another opera house, a theater. So they were looking for something different to do. And technology, um, because especially it was already so embedded into the city's industry and therefore rather familiar also to its inhabitants, was kind of the tool that they chose to do it, especially as in uh, 1979, the PC, the personal computer, became slowly more known um, as a new tool also to individual audiences and especially also to artists. So the visionary idea was to bring extinguished international specialists to Linz for a conference dedicated to new technology and at the same time, and this is very important, to organize an event which is still called the Klangwolke, the sound cloud, which invites the whole bigger population. So it's a rather easy, accessible event. It's happening at the Danube, and it usually attracts more than 100,000 of the Linz citizens to visit and to participate. So now you should see a short video. Ah, damn it, sorry. September 1979. Ein Ehrengast landet in Linz mit dem Auftrag, die erste Ars Electronica zu eröffnen. Staatstragend wird Spa 12, der erste elektronisch gesteuerte Roboter vom damaligen Linzer Bürgermeister Franz Hillinger, begrüßt. Willkommen in Linz, Herr Star 12. <lacht> Menschen haben da eine schöne 
So and unfortunately it was in German, but it was what the robot says was that it was, you know, it's in, it's nice to be in Linz, what a wonderful city. And that kind of is so important for us that we always try to bring here cutting edge technology with culture connected and always together in an artistic realm with scientists, artists, researchers from all around the world. But at the same time, always focusing on our local society, focusing on um, building bridges between those people that are not from the academic world forcefully, but that are here and um, that don't forcefully have so easy access into our community, into our bubble of what we've heard before. So it was a key element to involve the public and to encourage them to actively participate. And one of those programs was actually that the, scient uh, the, the citizens were called upon to switch their radios and place them in open windows and together they transformed the industrial city into a city of sound. And you here see now um, the, the images of uh, 41 years of the festival. And here you see also that every festival had a theme. And according to this theme, we curated and developed the program of the festival. But you also see that the themes are rather broad. So it allowed everyone to find their rather individual um, access point to the festival. And as was founded with the idea of using the artistic perspective, not so much the artwork itself, but the mindset and the attitude of artists, of how technologies transform our society to understand and to analyze it, but also to use it as a powerful tool and especially to empower people, to motivate us and to engage our roles, to participate in this transformation of our society. And just a brief slide about the history. So we started with the festival, actually. So the festival is the founding element of Ars Electronica um, 42 years ago. And now it consists of several divisions that support one another. And it's the festival, the so-called proving ground for artists and projects where young artists can also present their projects for the very first time. Then the second pillar is the Pri Ars Electronica, which is the, the Oscar in media arts honoring the best practice examples and excellence. And every year we present those winners within the festival. And then in 1996, the Ars Electronica Center, which is the museum that is uh, built in Linz, was built. And it's a year round setting for presentation and interaction and especially focusing on education. And finally, the Future Lab is, a, is our research and development facility that develops new application for business partners, but also for the museum. So this leads us now to this year's festival topic, a new digital deal. And the word deal, um, which comes actually initially from sharing and all above, asks the question of our possibilities for action and abilities. And of course, we can see how much we lack these skills in the last year's ongoing state of especially social disengagement. And the festival topic, the new digital deal asks how we can redistribute the cards. How can we change the digital world and how can we especially get a grip on the problems and still prevent the increasingly visible advances of a power political crackdown? because it is clear that states and governments alone will not be able to solve those problems. What skills and especially also what expertises do we need for this? And where, and especially the question, how can we acquire those skills? And how can we train the nece necessary experts that help us to acquire those skills? So in the end, it comes down to what roles do each and every one of us have to play in this change, in this transformation. And is it always exciting to see how the best ideas can turn into real flops also? And we all know this technology of facial recognition. And it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible of what technology can do. But in the end, it gets used to, for example, monitor parcel delivery people. And especially once they want to build a union, unite to protest against this technology, the richest man in the world uh, can think of nothing else but to actually... Um, take down the action against it instead of channeling it into something positive, provocative, uh, more inspiring. Uh, or one example is also that in the election of Trump, when they stormed the Capitol, 
uh, not even hours afterwards, uh, because everyone was filming and shooting videos and uh, images, uh, all across the internet we had the portraits of the people going into the capital. And with software, you can rather easily say um, who, or you can rather easily uh, determine the identities of those people. And you don't need to be a police officer for that. You can do it as a private person. And that puts all of us individually in a rather um, important and quite critical situation because we have the power of doing something with this technology individually. And we need to be aware of what we can do, either in a good and, of course, also in a bad way. And those conditions, um, and especially that there is no public place online, like, you know, the public place in the city where you can go uh, and pretty much do whatever you want there. Um, online, this does not exist anymore. So online, we have private places that are um, owned by social media companies, whether it's Facebook, Twitter. Uh, okay, that's owned by the same company, but... Uh, also Amazon, everything there is privately owned and it's not us that make decisions or that have an, even an option to opt out. If we opt out, we cannot be part of that community anymore. And Facebook has, what, 4 billion users worldwide and it's owned by a company that makes regulations without ever questioning those, without telling their users what they do, without giving their users any power of... Um, of changing those, of being part of a system, of being part of, of a community, of without having to kind of uh, adapt to those regulations. So that was what the one of those approaches for this year's festival was. Hmm. And the means of the festival was um, that we tried to do a dual festival, not hybrid anymore. That's uh, that's what we did last year. So this year we tried to evolve it into a dual event. Dual means that we have um, a that we organize the festival in Linz on site, but also together with our partners around the world on 86 different locations across every continent of this world in many different countries. And at the same time, we build up a an online festival platform where parts of those programs organized by us, but also by our partners would be visible again to the international audience. And dual is so important because we try not to stream everything, but we really try to find um, events that are explicitly dedicated to the local audience, to the physical audiences in those places. And then other events that are specifically created only for the international, for the online audiences. And sometimes there are bridges in between, but especially um, through different artistic projects that allow for individual connection between different partners, between different users. And therefore, the festival is definitely not only engaging the citizens of Linz, but actually across the world to address those topics uh, under this umbrella of the new digital deal. And we invited everyone to become a part and include also the, our partners to include their local communities, their fellow citizens, to think about what kind of world we all want to live in. And the idea was that ours is not one, but a sandbox for innovative use, especially of interactive technologies, and to test new mediation concepts and development of hybrid formats, of dual formats. So we don't expect a final solution, but we wanted to see different prototypes, different approaches of how people are solving those topics of how they're trying to get connected with others um, in this year. And there are many different ideas and uh, platforms also. And the idea was the ambitious goal is to become a role model of what an international festival of the 21st century could look like under such uh, conditions. And in the end, the festival turned out into a call to action, to take responsibility for our action and to highlight the different initiatives that already work on our problems by implementing concrete ideas and actions, so to say. So you see now a little bit of who are those different partners across the world. And um, I hope you still understand me. If you don't, it would be possible if to write me in the chat because I turn, then I turn off the music. But we are in the lucky situation that we have built a sustainable partner network 
Ah, let's stop for some moment, sorry. That we have built a sustainable partner network over the last years, actually over the last decades, which pays now off. And at the same time, our partner network waited for us to announce the festival because they really want to actively participate in there. And we initiated an experiment. We did not want the festival to dive into the network and disappear there, but allow itself to emerge from the network and many, get manifested in many places around the world. And that's why we went on a journey to all those network biotopes, those ecosystems, in which people all over the world are working to develop and shape our future. And in these days, that means above all to save our future. And a journey to all those committed communities that have already begun not to only think about the current problems, but to work on concrete ideas, actions, and solutions. And this call to action that we initiated, we asked our partners to to this, sorry, um, we asked our partners to go into their own community to find the activists, to find the initiatives that are already changing something specifically for their community, whether this is tackling problems from climate crisis or to biases in algorithms. And we initiated this metaphor of the festival gardens. It triggered an image that everyone could rather easily relate to and allowing everyone to become their own gardeners while Ars Electronica turned into a travel agency visiting places around the world. And we're very happy that so many partners around the world, and we're proud of that, that we could ask partners, whether it's on the African continent, whether it's um, in Asia, in Indonesia, in Moscow, in Russia, in Latin America, in South America, in Cuba, in Buenos Aires, our partners, and to also thereby get so different perspectives on what the media arts community represents. And now I have a short video that gives you an overview of what type of programs we organized in Linz and also what the online festival platform uh, looked like before I dig deeper and tell you a bit more about the actual programs and the curation there. In 2021, the Ars Electronica Festival welcomes you with open arms in Linz and many different locations around the city. The exhibition in the Ars Electronica Center are all about our future, unveiling the mystery of energy and its role in our society. How does work look like in the future? Also, the Ars Electronica Future Lab is celebrating their 25th anniversary with Alchemists of the Future. But of course, the Ars Electronica Center is by far not the only place where you can experience the festival. The University of Arts in Linz with loops of wisdom Change is an inevitable and ubiquitous force, but do we embrace it or fight back? A call to action for all of us. The Cyber Arts exhibition in the OK shows the winner of all three categories of the pre Ars Electronica 2021. And of course, the main location of the on site festival will take place at the Johannes Kepler University in Linz. This year's themes show us how technology and biology can form a symbiotic relationship to create astonishing art and show us how far we have come to create living organisms with technology. Create your world off as a stage for the new generation, for they might see solutions to problems we tend to ignore. A vast variety of conferences will shed light on questions most of us didn't even know that an answer was needed for, with highlights like the start state, the pre-form and AI lab conferences. What does digital feudalism look like and what role does our society need to take in this end? This is just a short abstract on what you can expect from this year's Ars Electronica Festival. We invite you to join us on site and of course online. Welcome to Swapcard. This year Ars Electronica has partnered up with Swapcard to deliver you the best online festival experience possible. You can choose between close to 500 different events within the festival. Be part of interactive journeys, workshops, online sessions and community events. Two live streams that are running around the clock will keep you company during the festival. Especially this year, the Ars Electronica Online Festival is more about you than ever before. Get to know the artist, meet them, talk to them, see them, actively be part of their program. Go find someone who thinks just like you, make new connections, new partnerships, new friends. Have you met your newly assigned buddy yet? No? Go sign up for our buddy system and make a friend for life. 
By the way, you can do all of this, no matter where you are, no matter what room you are in, or what house, or city, or continent, and from almost any device. Almost. Some might say online events are boring. The other ones check out the Asa Electronica Online Festival. Welcome to the Asa Electronica Festival, on site and of course online. In so what you've just seen is actually a, a brief overview of the different programs and especially the locations that we used for this year's festival um, in Linz. And it gave you a nice overview of the Ars Electronica Center, but also the city of Linz and our many partners, because also in Linz, it is not just us organizing the festival program, but the Art University and many different partners here have an active role within the festival. And that highlights nicely how important it was for us to turn into this platform that offers a place, a vis an option for visibility for all of us around. And especially it created uh, this nice engagement, this nice opportunity when suddenly we were all not allowed to travel anymore, that the festival moved out and decentralized itself into a festival around the world. And the Johannes Kepler University, which is the biggest university in Linz here, uh, offers a beautiful place, offers a park, as you can see, with a little lake in between, which is completely different to the locations that we have used in the last years. And it was nicely linking also to those COVID times because it suddenly allowed us to do a festival outdoors. It allowed uh, people to wander through the park, to experience the sound park, which again, uh, the sound came not from Linz or just from artists, but actually the sound park was connecting all those different partners around the world. So in our park in Linz, you were able to hear um, birds from, uh, from the Antarctic uh, streets from Tehran in Iran and other locations that were participating in the festival. So we always tried with physical representation through physical artworks to connect those different gardens around the world. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about the title of my presentation. So digital end and life was actually the title of theme exhibition this year. And under this umbrella of the new digital deal in the curation, we asked ourselves, um, or we noticed that our lives are already so connected with the digital world that it's hardly to distinguish anymore. And end end is actually a logic operator, a computational questions. And it takes both part and both part up kind of part of an equation that can only work if both are existing. Um, either one can be positive or negative, but it always needs both in order to achieve something. So digital end and life means that neither one can exist anymore without the other. And the important is that both are equally there and that can lead to positive or negative outcomes, but we cannot separate it anymore. And so how is the digital already interwoven with our daily lives and our organisms? And this is what we explore in the exhibition through the eyes of the artist. Now, very often we don't notice it anymore. I mean, our drinking water, our street lights are regulated by computer systems. We don't need to do anything anymore for that. And it needs the minds of the artist to point at those connections, to create awareness, to dig deeper and to make evident those hidden mechanisms. And the importance is that we're not looking for definite answers. We are looking for suggestions, ideas, vision, and asking questions in or also through the works that we present. And the works that are part of the festival and especially of the exhibition um, come from quite a huge range of diverse backgrounds. On the one side, I mentioned it before, um, we present the winners of the Prias Electronica, which is the, the best the media arts community at that moment in time has to offer. Then we have also uh, the winners of the Starts Prize, Prize, which is a collaboration with the European Union. And especially in that prize, we look at works that are created in rather huge collaborations um, between scientists and artists, and very often also linking to industry partners. And 
Then we have, of course, uh, the different residency, the artworks that, co that come out of the residencies that we organize here. And those different projects we bring into a curation together. So we don't start by theme when we do a curation, but we actually start with the works that we really would like to show. And the Prias Electronica, which with more than 4,000 submission, is our treasure box because we look through all those submissions and the ones that we really like, we kind of put on the side and then we see how we can fit them uh, together, how we can create a narration. And this year's challenge was that um, the narration should include not only the exhibition, the physical exhibition on site, but was linking to our partners and at the same time was linking into the online spheres. So we selected artworks that allow those different access models. Um, having a physical representation on site, allowing through a channel to connect to someone else, maybe have someone else in a different location participate in it. And at the same time, find a way of experiencing that work also online, maybe through an interactive website or different means of presentation. And that's also why we work together with those individual artists uh, to help them to find additional ways of presenting their work. Because uh, it's not always easy to know all the technical tools that are available, to especially look at the perception of the audiences when you think about an artwork. And therefore, we spend quite a lot of time, especially with our resident artists, to think about how those different models of presentation can take place. And one of the projects that is actually the installation with the three screens and the eyes, what you see on my screen now, it's, a, it's from the, a German art collective group, La Okon. Uh, the work is called Made to Measure. And they actually have found a very interesting approach to really bring those hybrid models, this dual, fe dual festival together. Um, as they were investigating in our footsteps online, what do we leave behind when we, um, you know, search via Google. And they did an anonymous call to ask people to participate in an experiment. And that experiment asked them to hand over, um, to allow them to search for the data of that uh, person that is volunteering. And they used only Google searches, no private platforms. And that person that was volunteering was anonymous. So they didn't know the um, identity of that person that were, they were working with. And then they hired an actress that tried to, just based on the data that they found online from that person, try to imagine that person, try to create a character, try to embody that person, finally. So what they did is finally, in the very end, they made an open call again via social media with some of the parameters that they found with some images of and some videos that this actress has created, uh, trying to imagine how that real person is. Uh, and via those means, they tried to find actually the real person that offered the set of data. And they managed to do it. It was a girl from uh, Tyrol in Austria. And they brought those two people together, the actual person that produced the data set, and on the other side, the actress that searched through this data set in order to learn about the person. And they brought those people together discussing the project and they added an interactive website where you as a user can experience this project. But on the other side, um, it's interactive. So you need to add sometimes your voice, you need to add commands. And that means you change the projects by becoming a part of it. And at the same time, obviously, you are also tracked by the algorithms because you do something while changing the project. Uh, showing very nicely of what we do in our daily lives constantly. And in this exhibition, we defined uh, different uh, topic streams. One of them was data spheres observed. And it leads us back to us and our very own humanity, asking what makes us special, what makes us human or even humane. And can we especially judge by the history that we leave behind? by the physical marks that we leave and create on this planet. And that also goes very much into this topic of digital journalism, when artists uh, like forensic architecture, for example, look deeper, uh, not just from an artistic point of view, but actually use the tools that we have at hand 
in order to point out what politically goes wrong, what problems appear, and really do an, a journalistic research into certain topics. Then we had uh, the subtopic of enabling digital empowerment. And therefore, we, we use those technology dailies and very often we don't know what, behind, what is behind them in you know, all this. And that leaves us with a certain disadvantage and a risk because we cannot intervene and shape the digital spheres that we are already part of. And we presented projects in that context um, that give us an insight and and highlight ways of interrupting, such as this project, what I described before, made to measure of how to hack the systems, of how to manipulate them for our own sake, of finding a subversive way of undermining those, uh, those programs. And the last part of the exhibition uh, discussed the topic digitally informed organism. And that is especially because the digital is more and more influencing the biological sphere. Um, becoming part of our bodies, uh, becoming part of our, um, you know, even uh, DNA and those kind of things. So we had uh, residencies and programs that looked at the genetic code of how different projects were able to uh, analyze code of how AI um, algorithms actually are able to reproduce uh, genetic code, making a connection especially be between the physical and the digital. So bringing it back to, uh, sorry, I jumped over, uh, bringing it back to our partners again, because of course it's not just about the exhibition of what we do here, but we created um, projects that are called the Festival Community Projects. And those means that with a set of tools, with a topic, we went out to all of our partners and we asked them to become a part of those projects. So one of them is called Taste Your Soil. Taste Your Soil means that there is a winner in the Prias Electronica, the Museum of Edible Earth, by the artist Masha Roux. Um, and here, actually, the task was to everyone around the world to go into their garden, to go into the streets, to go somewhere where you can find a piece of soil and to taste it. Please record this tasting process. Send us also the geolocation of where you are. And we collected all those samples coming from all the places around the world into um, a video collage showing of where people are first and for all, but even more so of what type of soil they are tasting. And sometimes, you know, if you're in the middle of Tokyo, you might not even have immediately a piece of soil next to you. But uh, you need to go somewhere in order to find it. And another project is called the, the Experts of the Future. Here we asked all of our partners to ask their kids of how they imagine their planet. And you can imagine uh, a five-year-old kid from Seoul compared to a five-year-old kid in South Africa. They have some rather diverse perspectives also of how they want to look their, uh, their planet to look like and what the emergent and the necessary and the urgent topics are. So now you see a very short video of an installation which is called Symphony of Absence. And that represented all those 80 partners around the world in a physical installation with, within our festival in Linz. And on those screens, each partner had one screen. We showed exactly those projects, the, the festival community projects, to give a diverse idea of what are the urgent topics? What are our partners concerned with? As time is now getting short, I just wanted to highlight two conferences that we organized and that especially dig deeper into this topic of the new digital deal. And all of them are online accessible. So if you have the time, please check them out. Especially it's the Branch magazine. It's a, it's a magazine for climate justice and uh, sustainable digitalization and solidarity and the creation of uh, an internet, a just internet for all that 
where we invited uh, the programmers of this magazine to organize a symposium for us, bringing in the experts that can discuss those topics. Another conference uh, dedicated itself to the same topic, but from a rather different perspective. Um, and it is about the technological tools and how we as a civil society use them or get abused by them. And we invited rather high qualitative speakers like Kilian Kleinschmidt, who is uh, working for the UN in Tunisia, uh, Glacier Kwong, who is actually an activist uh, coming from Hong Kong and currently live in, in Hamburg. We invited Julia Kloiber, who is uh, advising uh, the, the political parties in Germany of how digitalization for the community should work. And all of them, again, are online, so please check them out. Now I would like to highlight that for us, uh, this duo festival means that, again, we have people on site, but we especially focus on programs online and highlighting online here rather high qualitative workshop and especially also networking meeting that brought smaller group rather um, that specific groups together in order to create meaning and to allow connection individually individually and we as organizers we always were there so it was not just an open forum where everyone could gather and but we always um, had a specific topic we had a specific tool and we moderated in between to make sure that the, the exchange is happening and that people feel comfortable. One of the tools to transmit the whole program was actually the festival channels. Uh, we set up a, a TV studio in Linz where we invited our festival guests to participate in exchanges, but also we invited our gardens to create programs that then can be shown to the whole world and those streams were for free so everyone could watch them and meet those fascinating people that discuss without what, what a new digital deal looks like. And the same opportunity um, went out to our diverse partners so they could do a similar thing and we would help them with setting up everything, we would help them with the technological tools, we would help them with the platform in order to realize this. A project that happened this year for the very first time is the Festival University. And the Festival University brought to Linz 80 different people from around the world, and I mean literally around the world. Those people, or those kids actually, were between 16 and 24. And the topic was transform your world. Under this idea of the new digital deal, we wanted to discuss what the education in the 21st century looks like and especially what does it take in order to create change in our society. So we brought those people from Cuba, from Tunisia, from Lebanon, from the US, from different countries in Europe to Linz for a three weeks program and especially have them discuss of where do they want to go, what do they want to learn and what skills do they see as mandatory for the coming decades in order to be able to create change in our society. Um, I said it before, all of those programs are, already, are still online and will be online for free on our website. And we have a couple of major learnings from this year's festival that I will very briefly walk you through. And for one, it's collaboration. So we need uh, specific tools for collaboration. We need collaborations out of the box. We need um, new audiences for our media arts society. And we need to value regional as well as international audiences. We are focusing very much on, on the interactive, so we need to find ways of really having people engage with each other, whether it's online or on site. I think especially online, this needs to happen and it needs to demand for exchange and opportunities for B2B, for artists and all those kind of things. So doing an online festival that really is absolutely necessary. The same as with navigation and searchability online, many, you know, all those different platforms can be quite too much at some point. So it's important that audiences have an easy accessibility, um, have a mediation also, know what to experience, what to expect and where to go in order to make this experience for them interesting. Um, 
then it's important to look at the average viewing time. No one can expect that, you know, uh, you sit in front of a conference for 20 or five hours even, like you would do it in a physical place. So the programs need to be programmed in a different way and especially taking care of that you reach the audience. And that's also what we mean with Think Online. What does it take to reach the specific audience that the program is made for? And I think that needs to, you know, take away back a step back in order to evaluate whether we do the program just for the sake of the program or actually whether we do it for some audience that we already have. Uh, then, of course, we notice that a lot of programs are accessibly online for free, and that might not always be the best solution. So this year we asked for tickets for the online festival because rather cheap, but still we asked for tickets because cultural creation should not be for free. Artists should not work for free. And that's a very important um, measurement in order to raise awareness about these topics. And we need to look at the different requirements also for producing artistic work so that to make sure that artists get the support that they can adapt their artworks and their productions for this new time. Because I don't think that in the next year we're going to go back to, you know, uh, how 2019 was, or at least I think it would be a mistake. And therefore, we need to support them with giving them the expertise. And last but not least, or almost, um, we need to make sure that our staff, our team members are equipped with the tools and the knowledge to create those hybrid festivals, to create those dual festivals, because most festival producers have learned a certain set of tools what you need on site, but not forcefully what helps you online. And finally, um, be aware of your audience expectation. It doesn't make sense if we believe that we have a high qualitative content and uh, wonderful speakers. It's much more putting yourself into the place of the audience of what would I like to watch? Do I want to sit in my front of my screens or would I rather take a walk? And my final question is actually, so what future for festivals? And I think we all believed that we need festivals now more than ever. It's not nice to have. It's mandatory to have festivals in our societies because they are responsible. They create community, a communal feeling. And while festivals reimagine their future on so many different angles and levels, um, we need to make sure that funding structures change, that maybe evaluation criteria change. That uh, it's not always the numbers that count for funding organization, because um, especially when we think about um, the problems of our times, whether it's um, climate crisis, um, or sustainability, we need to change exactly those uh, evaluation criteria because otherwise we will never be able to find a sustainable way of doing festivals. And last but not least, we need to really be self-critical and without our own egos to think about what it means to program festivals, what it means to um, imagine a new culture, what it means to do a festival with fewer resources and here in Europe I think we're still in a lucky situation but we need to make sure that um, like the pandemic has disproportionately affected marginalized communities and groups in most countries around the world that we really need to recover we need recovery programs especially for them because otherwise the cultural community becomes a very singular one and that's not really what anyone wants so Thinking about evaluation criteria, we need to ask us for whom did the system in place works? And um, we need to allow people to function in society through perceived common culture. And I mean, of course, that's a big question that, you know, it's a million dollar question of how can empathy be created in digital space? And maybe that leads also to rather unusual partnerships. And Finally, we need to find new communities and that means we need to go, we need to trigger new audiences and therefore finding new ways of programming and new collaboration, diversifying our networks help us a lot. And especially 
linking it back to the previous presentation, uh, getting out of our own bubble in order to change is, I think, what is absolutely necessary at this point. And the future is a risk, nothing is certain, but we need to invest in this uncertainty. We need to imagine the, the future or the culture of the future. And festivals are the platform for experimentation, therefore have a key role in expanding our cultural capacity. So in my perspective, the role of festivals is there to create community. And we need to make sure that we still can do this with forever what means and thereby support the creators and the cultural community. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being with us. And I'm excited now for the, the discussion that's following now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, to all of the speakers uh, who presented today. Uh, indeed, those topics uh, and the uh, themes were very interesting and uh, we, we've heard some very interesting vital presentations. And of course, thank you all of you. And but thank you, Crystal, for now raising the imperative that festivals are indeed needed and are key for uh, for forming or for keeping a culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we've heard indeed something uh, very similar yesterday during our Czech and Slovak section uh, of the symposium uh, that really also raised the importance of uh, of that we need to we need to do these festivals and we need to uh, raise the culture so uh, it is indeed very imp uh, important and so all the uh, all the um, topics were uh, very diverse of course you know coming from uh, a very small uh, size and volume uh, you know festival like shortwave uh, to Arts Electronica is a huge it's a huge jump <laughs> and I'm sure everyone kind of felt felt the same as I, I did but uh, I guess that's the, that's the that's the beauty perhaps of, of uh, this kind of symposium that you can uh, hear how different uh, festivals in different countries of different size and scale uh, are actually dealing with, uh, you know, something even very, very similar situations and by which means they have to tackle uh, what actually is coming, you know, in the way. And so um, I would very much like to stay with, uh, with the question that uh, all of you, uh, all of you somehow touched, uh, which was the audience. And so uh, this is a question where uh, seems to be the key aspect that really need to be thoroughly to go through uh, in this kind of new world of, you know, sharing, uh, distributing uh, information, presenting content, presenting art. And uh, Cleo's uh, question uh, was posed in a way that how to maintain the attention of the viewer deprived of, of community experience and saturated with network stimuli. Uh, Shimon was talking about the new audience. He was saying that in the context of the pandemics, uh, some cultural institu institutions have even gone into some uh, hibernation or maybe ceased to exist and maybe some other, uh, you know, uh, cultural institutions, festival, even galleries, etc. They needed some time time uh, to relive and to, to bring back their, uh, their existence. And, and then also Crystal was talking about uh, the need for collaboration, need for new audiences, etc. And so my question, of course, uh, uh, is what do you believe are the, uh, are the main challenges in creating and maintaining the attention of the viewer, of the guest? Often, be it online, be it hybrid, be it a dual, uh, you know, uh, form of, of presenting or of existing as a festival. Um, did you have to develop any new or experimental strategies to attract, uh, attract audiences to your festival? Uh, and uh, uh, what is this? What is this new new audience? I mean, do you feel you have a new audience now? Or is the is the audience still the same? Only the platform, how the audience is uh, approaching your festival, is attending to your festival, is different. And anyone can start. So maybe I start. 
uh, I'm thinking, uh, you know, it's um, like, um, like two things because uh, um, audience, I think, is almost the same because, you know, like this uh, chance to really share our audience. How I try to touch and show you, you know, it's, it's, it's really not, not easy when uh, our sources are really limited. And uh, we need to be clever as well. But, but what, second thing, you know, what happens? We have now a lot of me metadata, you know, we see like uh, people react on our programs. So, you know, uh, some people watch only like two minutes. Some watch uh, two films from program, some watching whole program. You know, of course, you can use uh, tricks like uh, showing programs uh, like um, in the real time. So, you know, you need to choose like a uh, uh, special, you know, period of time and only then you can see the program. So this is like kind of limitation which change your um, kind of uh, experience. But if uh, like we are doing, it's like similar to VOD's platforms or SVOD platforms when you have um, access to the content on the time. So people have really different, you know, ways to work with that. And uh, what what is uh, um, like for us this question, what is the role of programmer then? If we want to like make our audience stronger and, and prepare something what doing like uh, uh, markets so you have like you know list of films some tags and you can you know make program by yourself or like go our way and try you know like use these topics you know uh, fresh stuff to or for example like what we miss you know like uh, it's not only like budget or something like that but as well names you know in the short film we like it's a very young you know artists very young filmmakers we don't we're not to recognize you know so we um, can build you know our audience like doing like big festivals you know on like uh, you know well-known um, personalities so we need to you know looking for 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 some uh, like ways of but if for example we invite i don't know like for example tarantino to program for us and show you know oh you can choose the films and make something as well tarantino can do it so you know but but of course you know again uh to to do it like with <laughs> somebody famous you know it's it's mm, almost not possible so still like um to we, we need we need to be really like um open for new things really like this awareness like you chris you know name it you know like what is expectation of our audience is change all the time you know and i'm thinking like i don't make this because you know i was really stressed and uh, i want to show like ways like how to go outside the bubble and i'm thinking you know um this is uh, the, 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 this kind of awareness opening for new audiences new you know situations uh, new challenges i think it's the only way and you know uh, thank you chris because i think i tried to touch something you named it so it's like amazing thank you <laughs> maybe i can jump in there because actually i feel that for us the um, i mean it took us 42 years to build up the media arts community, the audiences that we usually welcome in Linz. So I think expect, expecting that we have immediately within one and a half years an online audience similar to the physical audience is way out of line, to be honest. And But what we felt in this short amount of time of what since we are doing online programs or programs more uh, directed into the online realms, that suddenly we have uh, partners from places in the world that otherwise would never have the budgets or the chances or the means to really come physically to Linz or to travel that far. 
So, for example, I'm more than excited of having no partners in Cuba, as I said, or in Morocco, or in a small town in Bangkok, or like in near Bangkok. And I think that for me creates an incredible value because it's not so much about the masses, about, as I said, I really want to go away from this idea of the huge numbers always, but really thinking about how can we create individual exchanges, how can we cre create a value while people meet and I think that's the opportunity with at least having parts of the festival online accessible that it allows people to engage that otherwise would not have the means to be part of such an event and to go into the, the second question of yours Monica with the experimental strategies I think that is a key point in order to um, make people interested so what we try to understand is that, you know, if you do a panel on site and you just stream it online, then, meh, you know, you might not reach the goal of really having someone interested. So what we tried is to find ways of engagement that are a little bit out of the box. So in the way, you know, if, if I'm watching a panel online at home, I might not want to sit just in front of my screen, but I maybe want to even take a walk because, you know, it doesn't always need to be visual all the time. Or I might, you know, need to cook for uh, my friends or something like that. So I will spend time otherwise and not just only focus on one thing. And that's something that we need to take into account when we do programs online, that people have other things to do, and that we don't only exist out of the head, but we have hands. We need to engage. You know, you get rather bored rather quickly if you just watch. And... So what we try to do is, you know, uh, have a panel while uh, someone also shows you a recipe or cooking or engaging, you know, uh, not focusing so much always on this academic world of panels or uh, talks, um, but really more going into an experimental way where you have a yoga teacher in the screen as well, showing you some exercises that, you know, funnily might even link to a topic that you're discussing at this point uh, to find, yeah, experimental ways of doing something online that link to you as a body, as a person in a physical environment? Um, I'm actually very happy to share the uh, panel with Crystal because the history of our two festivals are uh, tightly linked. Um, and, you know, uh, Ars Electronica is even older than VRO and it doesn't happen all mm -hmm. often. So if you are, your festival have to, is have 10 more years of history, but both of our uh, institutions and, the, and festivals raised generations, we can easily say now generations of uh, viewers, of audiences, of um, participation, participants and um, uh, and we are also tied by, via a program, MAPEMARE, which is the European Media Art, Art Platform that we are um, uh, participating in together. So I really um, join you when, well, I was really thinking when, when you said the evaluation criteria are uh, changing. Um, because uh, we, I think both of our festivals are thinking about the uh, what you know what are the what should be this criteria for example so we are talking about audiences but i'll just get back to this uh, in a second but for example until now we were we were really uh, it was really like quantitative data like how many artists how many people came from audiences were really the question of audience was how many people how many thousand people came to see this and that that exhibition or that in that or that, that venue or participated in this event and now let's say we can still have some quantitative data but measured in a different um, uh, measurements like for example how much time do you spend with an individual artist on developing it this particular work how much time this or energy or whatever other measure systems how how much is invested in working with a specific local community for example on workshops with this community um etc etc so it's it's it still can be measured quantitatively but in a with a completely different um va value in, in it um and yeah and regarding um uh, audiences yeah i think this is the question we don't have 
uh, like a formula or an answer to, and and and, and of course I um, I hear in both of you 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 your the, your uh, presentations the need to adapt the, um, uh, the, the 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 let's say the, the offer right? well what we offer to the audiences we need to adapt we need to listen to their needs and as you said also the um, um, practices of participation are changing as well when it's online uh, well for, for me as as I as, I, as I'm as I said during the, my, whole, my whole presentations, Ra really uh, thinks that something that um, uh, that to maintain the thing that everybody's doing something in the same time, like in the same time. So let's just connect to the online presentations together, and rather than uh, everybody individually on their uh, on their device in a different fragmented time and space. So this is for me something that it's a beginning of a first step to this uh, to the answer to this question, um, and also yeah, and also um, the the the, the um, uh, well the, the wonderful opportunity to be able to connect everywhere. This is something that appears in both of our presentations, like with this pro, pro, you know uh, yours and 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 ours uh, program of uh, uh, partnerships with with institutions all, all over the world. Which is a wonderful opportunity, and in the same time, maybe a more uh, close dialogue with those who are locally available and locally come locally to see uh, events. Maybe uh, for the first time, we are able to recognize their faces when they are coming back. Maybe for the first time, we can uh, ask them directly what they were thinking about uh, what they've seen. So yeah, it's it's um it's a it's a it's a beginning of a very interesting process indeed. Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, I was going to ask a different question, but I still need to stay on this one because Cleo said something very interesting and I really want to know how you do that. And so you said uh, a part of actually, uh, right, experiments need to happen to to be able to address the audiences and, and to keep them and, and attract them maybe to the program. And you said we need to listen to audiences needs. How do you listen to the, I mean, how do you gather the information, what they want? How do you gather the information how to attract people? How would they want you to serve the program to them in this hybrid or, you know, dual mode? Or is, is it is something this... you are still trying to develop? Uh, is it a question for me? Because I pick it up. I, I think could it's be, a question. Could be, I mean, all three. Because because yeah. this is something Kristen said, and I was really very interesting in that as well. So I think everybody would like to know how do you do that. How do you I do don't that, have a system that is proof yet fully. No, but I mean, in the end, it, it comes down to individual conversations because I mean, visitors love to get give feedback. That's not the point. It is just more the point of being able to take it and find a means of evaluating it. And um, and I and going exactly against this quantity, I think it is would be nice to, and we do have always mediators in every physical space as well as online. So there are people from our team being there constantly on site or online in those events. And they have, the, I mean, they are in direct contact with, with the audiences, with the visitors, so they get the immediate reaction. And it would just, um, need a bit more system behind that that I would say that we also did not yet develop but that I would like to kind of do now over the year for the next year festival also is um, to find some evaluation criteria that they can immediately once you know after speaking to a visitor um, put this somewhere in a system so that in the end over the day of the f five days of the festival we have some sort of average, you know, you will never reach everyone, of course, but you get some ideas of what different age groups are those people, where are they coming from, uh, what are they interested in, what did they enjoy mo most, because it's usually, a, and kind of the feedbacks that we get in between, it's usually quite surprising of what people like most or enjoy most. It's, very often, not immediately of what I would think of, you know, for example. <laughs> and uh, and we just need to value it also more. And maybe, and it does not mean that we need to immediately change the whole programming to just please people. That's not what I'm saying. Um, it is 
just more of taking into account in, in how could it work better? How could we even trigger things in a different way? How could we be more provocative even with things people don't so much enjoy but should talk or think about? So um, I think it allows us a different approach. And it's difficult, of course, if you have 100,000 visitors, you will never reach everyone. But if you you know, try to program a bit more for specific audiences, have a, a workshop for a specific group of people. Um, that, I think, could uh, help. And again, I think it takes time. I mean, we are at the beginning of quite a big change. Not maybe not at the beginning, but it triggered us in the last 18 months quite a lot. Um, we should just not uh, forget to learn out of it and to, you know, really make use of, of the time that we are living in at the moment. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, I, um, I have a question here, which is which is related to uh, again what uh, what we already heard here. But what is the kind of a common situation right now? It's starting to be uh, like uh, what I what I experience now, and it's not only uh, related to. Uh, big European or even uh, outside of Euro festivals, but even here the situation in Czech Republic and Slovakia, uh, that instead of actually uh, holding festivals in a time frame of uh, I don't know, a few days or, or up to a week, now we actually see more and more uh, festivals extending their program into year-round, you know, activities, and so uh, running workshops, exhibition talks, symposia, and you know, and you name it. And so Clio has presented already Bro Biennale as, you know, they are actually turning to this format. Uh, already, of course, we, we know Arts Electronica, we know Transmediale is doing this, etc. And so uh, do you think that uh, this kind of rethinking the prog program offering uh, has something to do with trying to keep the audience with the festival all the time, not to lose the audience, you know, kind of keep them uh, attached, attracted still uh, uh, with your program? Or what What, what else is, is the driving force behind, you know, this dramaturgy that is maybe closer to media art center than, than, fe than a festival as such? Um, I can jump in here because we on purpose did not do that, to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> because we felt it needs this momentum and time when everyone is uh, anxious to do something together, to meet up, to have the community there. Because if you distribute it across the gear, then it's different programs, but it never creates the spirit, at least not in this mass, in this amount of when you have a five days event. However, after this year's festival, um, I also feel that everything at the same time might be a little bit too much. So maybe there can be moments can be created um, that are linking festi a festival program together that is not forcefully distributed around the whole year, but where you have um, programs and not just a talk, not just a workshop, but still a focus point over a weekend, for example, that feels a little bit like a festival and is kind of building up to the final event or something like that or happening after the festival then. Um, so that would be something. But on the other side, we have, I mean, we are in the luxury situation to have a museum here as well. So for us, it was more that um, we did program throughout the year, but coming from the museum more, coming from that part of uh, Ars Electronica, because especially at the time when the museum was closed, we felt that we need to represent the artists and the projects that we have in the museum and to make sure they are visible, they are able to you know, do something, even if the museum was closed. And because we, of course, wanted to um, keep our audiences active, not just for the sake of the audiences, but especially because we work so much with children and schools and they had the biggest need of new perspective during the time of pandemic when everyone was sitting at home. So it was more not only the need from our side, much more focusing on the artists, focusing on the audiences that we work with over the whole year, yes. Um, I think it's difficult to experiment and evaluate in the same time. And probably uh, we will need a little bit more, more time to understand what uh, this change of uh, formula has um, bring to the discussion, why 
uh, why was it necessary why, and, and, and experiment others. This is the very beginning of the journey because as Crystal said, nothing will probably get back to how it was uh, in 2019. So, so it's again the beginning of, um, of experimentation. Um, and from, from, yeah, from our perspective, there is uh, an advantage of having uh, things uh, deploying gradually uh, is uh, the, uh, yeah, the, that we can build up and we can th see the next event through the lens of the previous one. And this is something new that we did, um, uh, discovered doing it while doing it. But, um, uh, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, there are m many different, also new possible ways uh, coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, we need to um, be too aware not only about our audience needs, but as well our needs, our needs, <laughs> you know. And many times, you know, like uh, we, because like we are small organizations, small festival, but to be honest, to be like visible, we need to be active on local level. So Poznan, where we're doing a lot of things, we need to be, you know, uh, be active nationally to, to, you know, on the like Polish scene. As as well, we need to be strong international, you know. And we have like really small team, and you know, like uh, to be everywhere, you know, and to um, do really nice, strong stuff as well online, of course. You know, it's like really big challenge, and uh, we now like um, preparing kind of um, workshops. Like we try to rethink, you know, what are we doing for who, you know, what kind of process we want to, you know, use for real change. Because you know, as well, like you know, in Poland we have a lot of, you know, like you can say mm, big uh, problems, you know, generated via politics, and you know, like. Our mission is, you know, uh, to to be like very active, you know, as well in this field. But you know, again, like I say, it's like many, you know, tensions, many tensions, and uh, like um, I'm always, uh, you know, happy. Like still, you know, our people want to do stuff, want to work, you know, and be like creative because we need to be really, really creative to, you know, to survive. Because it's like that, you know, like cultures in Poland is really not on the on the top interest of, you know, people who have power and money. Yes, and I will just add, it's probably not only Poland, uh, <laughs> Simon, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and and uh, and it's uh, very interesting what we are talking about, but I know that time is coming to the end and I still have a closing question uh, uh, because uh, some festivals run their uh, 2020 program already in a hybrid format and some they did not run it at all and some uh, some festivals went uh, solely, you know, virtual. Uh, so, um, uh, do you believe that, and 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 of course, hybrid and like uh, Arcel Tonica this year going dual, which is to be different to hybrid, but still uh, in 2021, uh, then a uh, number of festivals used this kind of hybrid for, uh, format to actually run their festivals also. And do you think uh, this is possibly a format or a mode that festivals should adopt for the future, regardless of, or whether there will be any further lockdowns to do, uh, due to changes of the uh, epidemiological situation? Is it something, is the safe side going, you know, uh, a hybrid just to make sure that, that you can keep the festival running, you keep the program being distributed to your audiences? Big question. Yes, right. that's a million dollar question. <laughs> And I and I really, and I really, and I really don't mean to and and the, the the B the B scenario is not going back to 2019 because that probably not no one would want that and and it's kind of you heard it from Crystal here as well and and from Cleo, uh, but you know so I'm not, I'm not really comparing like uh, do we want to go back to 2019? I'm just rather thinking about about the future. Is it a you know a suitable format? I would not forcefully uh, say yes to a hybrid event too much, must be honest. Um, I would, however, advocate very strongly um, that we learn out of what we did in the last 18 months and 
find for every individual festival their own approach because again it depends really on individual situations on individual audiences and individual needs of the cultural and creative community and um, there is especially looking at the production side if you do a hybrid event it is the double of team members that you need it's a double of budgets in the end what you need so it's not something that you just immediately say oh yes it's fun just because we have a couple of additional people online because what i mean we did that physical event here in linz and the, and everyone that was here physical didn't even care about anything what is happening online so um you see the need in the people in the community to engage again in physical spaces that's for me, however, it does not mean that we should completely forget of what we did in the last years, but really again, and maybe that is relating to this longer term, maybe not everything in the same five days or something like that, but finding ways of keeping the community active, especially if they're not in the same space. So maybe we think can find individually new ways and new models of with what we learned without um, just continuing to do what we now did in the last year. I agree, but you know, as well, I, I want to do this awareness. I want to add one X aspect, you know, of artists, of, you know, filmmakers, because, you know, many times I'm thinking, you know, we try, you know, use their work, you know, not like necessarily like these things are made, so, uh, or made for, you know. I'm thinking like it's a lot of really good content who really works in online, you know. Uh, so please do it, use it, you know, find a good way to share it with audience. But you know, some things really works offline. So do it like that. And as well, you know, we need to work now very strong, you know, to keep audience in the cinemas because, you know, it's like in, in, in some, uh, uh, cinema is really a big problem, you know, to, to, with that. So, you know, it's, uh, I'm thinking, you know, we need to be like to play with, the, with this whole, um, you know, like players and, and, and uh, try, you know, like don't do it things by force, you know. And, and I'm thinking if, if we do it like smoothly, nice, you know, I think like uh, we be okay with, uh, like artists with audience and with us. I think we started the journey, all of us started the journey to something, to a distributed, distributed in time, distributed in space, distributed online, offline, hybrid, distributed through communities, distributed connections, et cetera. And there is no way to go back to the one big block. So maybe this is the beginning of an answer for your question as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Three different festival, three, uh, festivals, three different dancers. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much for um, for your for your great presentations today. I really loved the fact how various they they were. So each of you had a totally different format, uh, and I and I, and I'm sure that just kept the audience aware of something is happening. And so uh, thank you for your lovely presentations. And I'm sure it not only in me but in many other people raised many questions. And um, and I think there's still a lot uh, to think about. But of course, I guess these debates are needed. Uh, but we are still at the beginning, like you said already. So. Uh, Thank you, and I want to wish you all the best, and 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 um, making sure that your festivals survive and and will be will be attracting as many people as in the past. I mean, maybe more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.